Okay, so uh, the goal here now is going to uh, compute the vanishing, uh, the, or the vanishing of some points uh, of, of uh, some functions on an elliptic curve at some points. So I'm going to take E to be uh, an elliptic curve over some algebraic closure of K. Um, and then uh, I'm interested in this type of elliptic curve in a short value stress equation. And I want to actually now, so let's let's uh, factor this over the algebraic closure. There's definitely roots, or you can assume that these roots are in the in the base field if you want. But these factors completely um, for so so for some EIs and um, k bar. Uh, let's just assume that they are in the base field. Okay. Uh, so uh, the question here that I'm trying to solve is what is the order of vanishing at um, so there are there are some points uh, in in this curve so for example I have uh, pi if you take the x coordinate to be ei then the the x polynomial uh, the polynomial in x vanishes so I get uh, pi uh, is ei zero is a point Okay, so how about the order of vanishing at pi of the function x minus ei? So what is the order of vanishing there? Definitely at when x, when uh, if I evaluate at pi, the x coordinates ei, so it vanishes. So does it vanish to order one or does it vanish to higher order? And uh, I'm going to also have one more point zero one zero uh, and that is a point at infinity on the curve that's the only point at infinity so what is the order of vanishing uh at o of the of this function so let's see uh what happens all right so uh i'm actually going to uh to work in projective coordinates to do so uh, so uh, the projectivization is going to be uh, z uh, y squared equals x minus e one z and x minus e two z and times x minus e three z. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and then what I'm talking about the function that I'm interested in. Um, remember that uh, the functions are uh, the function field of E or let's talk about the coordinate ring of E is uh, the coordinate ring of unaffine chart, right? Uh, so it's the coordinate ring of E intersect some uh, A2, which in this case, for example, if I take the A2 to be uh, z equals one, then this is the coordinate ring of x and y. Uh, modulo the equation y squared equals x cubed minus or minus uh, equals um, uh, minus ax minus b. Right, that would be the function field. I can take other uh, other other patches and then I see the functions that look a little bit different. So um, I'm actually going to talk about all the functions in projective so I can uh, sort of like take a function in projective space and then send it to the a correct patch there to, to look at the vanishing. So for example, when I say uh, the function x minus e1z under this uh, patching uh, and in this patch, this corresponds to the function x minus e1, so these are sort of like capital uh, uppercase x and z, and this is the little x minus e1. Okay, so when I, so these two functions, I'm going to, when I talk about vanishing, I'm talking, uh, I, I identify both. All right, so, um, so let's see what happens at uh, p1. So let's start first with the point p1. Uh, which is the point E101 in projective space. And uh, notice that both X minus E1Z and um, on Y are in uh, MP. 
right? They both vanish. You just, just evaluate the coordinates at those uh, functions. They vanish at that point, so they are in there. Uh, but moreover, uh, x minus e1 uh, and y in the function field is maximal. And um, in Ke, right? Uh, because I mean, x minus e one and x they generate uh, the same functions. So, um, so we have a maximal ideal in there, and uh, so they generate uh, uh, MP. Okay, so, um, so they generate. MP one, all right. Um, but in fact, so we want to know uh, the vanishing of x minus e one to begin with. Uh, so notice that I can evaluate. So uh, this is a common trick to figure out what is the vanishing of a function. Is uh, do you tailor expansions of the definition of the of your curve? Do you tailor expansions around? Um, that function x minus e1. So I'm going to do a Taylor expansion. Uh, so if we call this polynomial here f of xz, uh, then do a Taylor expansion um, around x equals e1 uh, to get the following equation. What I get is that. Um, uh, e1 minus e2, e1 minus e3, um, x minus e1 z, z squared. So I did a, the expansion and then I'm going to solve for the term that has only a linear term in x minus e1, uh, and that is z y squared uh, minus uh, x minus e1 z cubed. Um, minus 2e1 minus e2 minus e3 x minus e1z squared z okay um you can probably get away with just saying like higher order in terms of like the square or cubes of x minus e1z but here the actual equation you get when you do that all right uh then <clears throat> then what happens so we are trying to see uh these are constants so here these are constants. So we're trying to see what is the vanishing of these, of uh, x minus e1, and uh, what is the vanishing of z? Well, z doesn't vanish at the point. So since um, uh, z does not vanish, at p1, then uh, what do we get? Uh, then, um, then you see that the vanishing on the right hand side, what is the vanishing on the right hand side at P1? This vanishes, Y vanishes, but it vanishes at least, uh, we don't know, if, say even if it vanishes to order one, this is a square, so there's a uh, vanishing of four degree two at least, of order two. This vanishes to order three, and this vanishes at least to order two. Okay? so. The right hand side vanishes to at least order two. Um, and here, this is the only thing that vanishes. So the order of vanishing of this is at least two. That's what we conclude from that equation. Okay. So um, we see that uh, x minus e1z is in uh, the square of the maximal ideal. Okay, um, but then what is MP1 modulo MP1 squared? Um, well, MP1 is generated by X minus one, X minus E1 and Y, uh, but X minus E1 is in the square, so it's zero in that quotient. So this is generated by Y. by the y-coordinate, okay? 
um, but then it cannot be that uh, that the y coordinate is also trivial. That the y coordinate would be in the square of the uh, of the maximal ideal, because if it was, then this quotient would be trivial. But the dimension of this has to be one, because remember we had a an alternative definition of singularity, and um, we are going to assume, by the way, that uh, they are not all the same. So we are going to assume. I'm going to put it here in red. We didn't say um, that. Uh, e is smooth, which uh, it actually is equivalent to um, the E1, E2, E3 are all distinct. Okay, that's um, that's enough to um, it's an even only if uh, that those uh, that will give you. Um, at least if the, if the characteristic is not a two or three, uh, that that will be um, um, uh, non-singular. Okay, so um, it is smooth, but then uh, the dimension of MP1 over MP1 uh, squared over K bar is one because uh, smooth, so uh, y cannot be zero in that quotient, and that tells you that actually the order of vanishing at p1 of y is one. Okay, that's not what we started. We wanted the vanishing at x minus e1, not at y, but okay, I'll take it. The order of vanishing at y uh, of y at p1 is one. All right, how does that help? Well, now I have a relationship uh, that tells me from the same equation uh, this equation star. Um, so, uh, so now from star, uh, we deduce that the order of vanishing at p one of x minus e one z has to be uh, the minimum of the order of vanishing of twice the order of vanishing of y. Uh, twice the order of vanishing uh, of uh, x minus e1z and uh, three times uh, from uh, the, the cube term, three times the order of vanishing at p1 of um, x minus e1. Okay, that is, this comes from the um, um, the properties of the OR function, um, but you can also see that, you know, if, if whatever the minimum amount of um, vanishing is in all those, uh, that will be uh, the minimum. Uh, if the minimum was one of these two that relate the function with itself, then, uh, then we would reach a contradiction because um, Note that the order of vanishing at p1 of x minus e1z is bigger than zero. So if ord equals two twice ord, then uh, that would be a, a problem because then that would say that the ord is zero, but it's not zero. So it cannot be that the minimum happens um, here or here. So it must be that the minimum happens. At, um, at here, and this tells me then that um, the order of vanishing at P1 of X minus E1Z is twice the order of vanishing at Y, which I know is uh, two times one, so it is two, okay? So this is actually what we wanted, was the order of vanishing of P1 uh, at P1 of x minus E1 is, uh, it vanishes to order two, okay? Though it's just x minus E1, it looks like the vanishing would be one, but because of the geometry of the curve, the vanishing is actually two, all right? We have actually two important pieces of information, this piece and that piece, all right? So um, now uh, let, me, let me do uh, a few other points. 
So now uh, we can take um, the order of vanishing. Uh, so similarly, the order uh, of vanishing uh, at PI of X minus EI Z is two uh, in the order of vanishing at PI of Y is uh, one for one, two, three. There was nothing special about P1, right? So now uh, let me also see what happens at infinity. That's, uh, that's sometimes uh, the tricky part here. So now let um, uh, O be uh, 0, 1, 0. And let's see what happens here. Now uh, the ideal is generated by by little x and little z, uh, where uh, we're taking a new chart to look at this function field, right? So now uh, the function field that we are looking at, ke, so that we look at functions around O, it cannot be the x and the y um, in, the, in, the, in the patch, uh, in the affine patch, z equals one, O is not there. So we want to take uh, functions in some other uh, affine piece. So now, because y is non-zero, I'm going to take it at y equals one. And then what I get is uh, a function field in terms of x and z. Uh, and then modulo uh, the ideal generated if you take the original function and evaluate as z at y equals one then you get a new function and look at that function instead okay all right so uh, that is the little x and the z and what this means is that uh, my function uh, uh, little x is really my functions x divided by uh, no 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 not divided by z divided by y and um, a little z is my function capital Z divided by y. Okay. All right. So um, right. So since x and z generate m o. Uh, this implies that, um, uh, what does it imply? It implies that X minus EIZ, uh, it is also uh, something that vanishes at O uh, for I one, two, and three. Um, and, uh, but we also have that z y squared equals x minus e one z times x minus e two z x minus e three z like before, um, and y does not vanish at o. Then do um, you see uh, this? The fact that x minus e i um, vanishes at O, says that this vanishes, this vanishes, and this vanishes. So the left-hand side has to vanish to degree three. So the order of vanishing of Y is zero. So the function Z itself has to vanish to at least order three. So this tells me that uh, Z itself uh, vanishes uh, to order three. So I'm going to write it like that, at least to order three. And um, and then uh, we conclude again that M O over M O squared is generated. Remember, it was generated by X and Z, but Z is in the cube, so it's in the square. Uh, so it's generated just by X. And again, 
uh, that tells me that the order of vanishing at X has to be one. Okay, uh, which implies actually from the equation above uh, that the order of vanishing of, uh, of Z itself is three. Okay, and then the order of vanishing at O of X minus EIZ, uh, this will be the minimum of the order of vanishing of x and the order of vanishing of z and this is the minimum of one and three which is one okay and that is valid for one two and three so uh what we've then shown is that the order of vanishing at o of um x minus ei little x minus ei which is the order of vanishing of in projective coordinates of x minus ei z divided by z uh you see that uh this the top vanishes to order one the bottom vanishes to order three so this is one minus three equals minus two okay so that function has a pole of order two at infinity and uh, the order of vanishing at O of uh, Y, uh, which I'm gonna write little y, is the order of vanishing of uh, Y over Z, is again, uh, Y doesn't vanish, but Z vanishes, so this is the order three, okay? Uh, so these are poles. And this is a pole. Okay. So we've we've uh, analyzed what is the vanishing uh, at pi of x minus ei, and what is the vanishing at o, and what is the vanishing at pi and o of the function y. Okay. We are going to keep track of these work uh, in a moment, or and maybe next time. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, divisors. So we're going to collect this information in terms of divisors uh, a little bit later. All right. So um, I think I'm going to uh, stop here for a little break and then continue um, with other things about functions.